40-year-old Rosalio Gutierrez Jr. is a resident of Kenosha, Wisconsin, where he has lived for the majority of his life. He is the loving father of two children. He has an outgoing personality, lots of friends, and a love for the outdoors. On Sunday, May 17th, 2020, he dropped off his daughter in Twin Lakes, a town 25 miles west of Kenosha. He spent every other weekend with his children. This will be the last confirmed sighting of him. He spoke on the phone with someone around 8.30 that night and has not been heard from since. Rosalio worked for a contractor in Lake County, Illinois. He failed to report to work on May 18th and 19th, which was out of character for him. Rosalio was also dating a woman who became concerned when she could not reach him. She therefore went to his apartment in the 3700 block of 15th Street to check on him. When she arrived, the sliding glass patio door was open. The furniture inside of the apartment was out of place, as though there had been an altercation, and a large area rug was missing. There was also a large amount of fresh blood on the floor and on some of the pieces of furniture. She immediately called the police. Rosalio's vehicles were parked outside of his apartment, and his cell phone had been left behind. Upon hearing of the disappearance, Rosalio's mother and stepfather, Celia and Eugene Patterson, immediately began the drive to Wisconsin from their home in Colorado to help search for him. I want people to know he is missing, and that he is loved, and that we want him home, Celia told Fox 6 News. I could not have asked for a better son. Authorities quickly had a suspect in Rosalio's disappearance. On May 21st, two days after Rosalio was reported missing, 39-year-old Zachariah Anderson of Mequon, Wisconsin, was charged with two felonies for stalking his ex-girlfriend, who was also the mother of his children, and her current boyfriend. That woman's name has not been released because of the stalking case, but her boyfriend is Rosalio Gutierrez. In the criminal complaint against Anderson, the woman claims that he was aware of her relationship with Rosalio and did not approve of it. She believed that he had been tracking her movements, following her, and recording her without her knowledge, based on places she saw him and information he had about her movements and private conversations. When police interviewed Anderson's daughter, she told them that she had seen items that had been stolen from Rosalio's car while it was parked outside of her mother's home, including a letter and his car registration in her father's possession. He had also given her a phone and instructed her to use it to record her mother. Examination of that phone revealed that it had been used to order tracker devices from Amazon on April 21st. The girl also said that Anderson admitted to her that he had been videotaping her mother and Rosalio. Anderson denies these charges, and his defense attorney told the court that his former girlfriend had previously made false allegations against him. She had unsuccessfully petitioned for a restraining order against him in the past. Anderson told detectives that he was jealous of his former girlfriend's relationship with Rosalio, but denied tracking her movements, recording her, or stealing from Rosalio. He claimed his daughter had simply lied to the police. There is an ongoing investigation in which Mr. Anderson is the focus involving the whereabouts of Mr. Gutierrez, Deputy District Attorney Angelina Gabrielle said at Anderson's first court appearance on the stalking charges. Even if Anderson is involved in Rosalia's disappearance, Celia Patterson believes that there may still be another unknown individual who played a role in the case. Because of Rosalia's size and strength, Celia thinks that at least two people would have been needed to abduct him. She is also concerned that the weather may have negatively impacted the investigation. The sound of the heavy rains that fell on the night of the 17th may have prevented Rosalia's neighbors from hearing the fight in his apartment and fewer people would have been outside to witness him being taken from his home. The Kenosha Police Department has released statements in the weeks following Rosalio's suspicious disappearance, assuring the public that they are still focused on the case, but they so far have not been able to release further information. Rosalio Gutierrez remains missing. On May 4, 2020, 28-year-old Devante Morgan and his girlfriend traveled from the Bay Area to Mount Shasta, California. They would be staying at the Cold Creek Inn during their time there. The trip did not go as planned, however. The night they arrived in Mount Shasta, the couple got into a fight 
and ended the relationship. They still spent the night in the same room, but Devante's now ex-girlfriend went out on her own the following morning to watch the sunrise. As she was walking back to the inn after watching the sunrise at approximately 9 a.m., she passed Devante, who was walking south on Mount Shasta Boulevard. He still looked upset over their argument from the night before, so she did not try to speak with him, and returned to the inn. Devante, however, never came back to their room. On May 7th at 9.15 a.m., with no further sign of or word from Devante, she went to the Mount Shasta Police Department to report him missing. The police were able to confirm Devante's ex-girlfriend's sighting of him on the morning of May 5th using surveillance footage, which showed Devante walking south on Mount Shasta Boulevard just after 9 a.m. They were eventually able to find footage of Devante on 10 different cameras at six different locations in Mount Shasta between 9 and 10 a.m. that morning. After 10 a.m., however, they have no idea where he went. Devante's phone was last pinged on May 3rd, the day before he left on his trip to Mount Shasta. The phone has either been turned off or its battery has died, and it cannot be traced. It is believed that Devante had his debit card with him on the trip, but it has not been used since May 4th. There have been few leads in the case, but authorities have been doing what they can with the limited information they have. They received a tip that they did not believe was very credible, but still brought in a cadaver dog to perform an area search based off of it. The effort did not locate Devante. There have been some reported sightings of Devante, both in California and in Oregon. Mount Shasta police have followed up on them, but none of the individuals reported to police have turned out to be Devante. I really don't have any theories, nothing that's got any validity or credibility that is supported by evidence. Parrish Cross, the Mount Shasta police chief, said two weeks after Devante's disappearance. Devante's family traveled to Mount Shasta after he went missing to help with the search. They have covered a massive area on foot and by car, searching for Devante in town, in area campgrounds, and up in the mountains. They have not heard from him since he disappeared, and say that he would not have voluntarily taken off without contacting them. They also say that Devante was not familiar with the Mount Shasta area and had never been there before. In general, Devante preferred to stay close to his home and to his family. They have enlisted the help of a private investigator to look for Devante and are offering a $25,000 reward in the case. Seventy-nine-year-old Joe Roy McMillan lives in Carthage, Texas, the county seat of Panola County. According to Hubert Owens, his pastor at the First Assembly of God in Christ Church, Joe is a good, lovable, and faithful man. On May 21, 2020, Joe left home to run some errands. The last place he is known to have been is Ted's Saw Shop on FM 1970 near Clayton. The store and its parking lot have surveillance cameras, so Joe's entire visit to the property is documented. The footage confirms that Joe was alone at the time. Joe drove away in his blue 2004 GMC Sierra at 3.09 p.m., but did not return home. Joe's disappearance is made all the more serious by his medical conditions. He is diabetic and was without his medication when he went missing. His family also says that Joe has begun showing some early symptoms of dementia. A large number of volunteers coordinated with law enforcement to search the wooded areas and small side roads in rural areas around Carthage for Joe and his truck. The search effort was made slightly easier by the bright blue color of Joe's truck and the fact that Joe was wearing a red polo shirt at the time of his disappearance meaning that both Joe and the vehicle would not necessarily blend into their surroundings if they ended up in a remote area. Both law enforcement and Joe's family were able to locate surveillance footage of Joe's truck driving south from different cameras, mainly at gas stations. Not all of the footage shows who is driving the vehicle, but Joe can be seen in some of it. Some of the footage is from the Nacogdoches area, and the last of it is from Livingston over 100 miles south of Carthage. Joe had family in the Houston area, and it is believed he may have been driving to see them. Most of the footage of Joe's truck shows it traveling south on Route 59, 
Authorities are asking that anyone with a home or business with surveillance cameras along Route 59 check their footage for any sign of the blue GMC Sierra with Texas license plate DMK2975. The search for Joe is currently focusing on the Livingston area, with hopes of finding either Joe or clues as to the route he took after he drove through the area. Joe's family is offering up to $5,000 as a reward for information that helps locate him.